This is Drew with Boomer Music Company, your band and orchestra experts since 1976. Hello, I'm Brandon Vigil. I'm a repair technician with Boomer Music Company, and today we're going to talk about saxophones. So uh, in this first video, uh, we're going to go over how to properly take uh, the instrument out of its case, assemble it, disassemble it, swab it, and put it back in its case. So let's get started, shall we? All right, on the saxophone cases, uh, most cases you will see feet. So you can see these four here as well as these four here. So that's a pretty good indicator of how we need to set this case down. So we're going to just simply put it this way. Oftentimes you'll see um, a logo or the manufacturer on the top of the case. So that should be a pretty good indicator that we're doing a good job. Let's see if we're right. So now we're going to undo the, both of these latches and lift it up and we did a good job here. All right, so now uh, what we were looking at is the main, the saxophone. Uh, we have the neck here. Here's going to be the mouthpiece. We'll get to that in a second. And your accessory pocket. So in the accessory part uh, department, we, compartment, we'll have like the neck strap, the cork grease, um, the reeds, your swab, uh, anything that you need to be successful, including you can get tuners and what have you, uh, and as well as boomer pencils. This is really good to mark your music. All right. So uh, first, let's uh, start with the mouthpiece here. So we'll take the mouthpiece, and we'll get to the next video, but there's a little bit of a taper here, and we'll talk about that in our next video here. So we have the mouthpiece, we have the mouthpiece cap, which helps protect the tip of the mouthpiece as well as read it once it's mounted onto the mouthpiece. And speaking of that, here's your ligature. And this just simply holds the reed onto the mouthpiece. And of course, we're going to need a reed. So this is what vibrates. Um, so we'll take it out of its little case here. And then you want to wet the reed, uh, both sides, um, so you can put it in your mouth. And do the other side as well. Now, typically, you can get your reed, reed wet while you're assembling the instrument. Um, you, know, you can also put in uh, some lukewarm water, which a lot of times is what I end up doing. Um, but once we have the reed wet, then I'll show you the way I assemble the mouthpiece. Now, personally, I'll show you the reason why I do this this way. Uh, it helps save you some money and time. Um, so you, this is on a taper, so just simply meaning uh, this is a little bit thicker part of the mouthpiece. It's a little bit thinner. Same with your ligature. So a little bit bigger on one side than the other. All right, so knowing that, we're going to put it up. Just have it up just a little bit here. Okay. And then we're going to take the reed, take the, the bigger side, not the really thin, frail side, and slide it in. Because it's on a taper, then we slide the ligature back. So generally what you want to do is have the tip of the reed to the tip of the mouthpiece. That's a pretty good start. All right, so we slide the ligature back. We don't want it too forward over here. Obviously not too far back. Just enough to support the reed. You'll notice the, um, the bark on the reed. So that's where we're putting the ligature. Now we just simply tighten it up. We don't want to over tighten it. And we don't want to have it too loose. Uh, the basic purpose is just secure the reed onto the mouthpiece. That's it. So typically when you're staring at the mouthpiece, uh, the screws are going to be on the right. That's a pretty good indicator that you uh, have it assembled right. You may also see other ligatures that are called inverted ligatures, which again, the screw is going to be on the right. But most of the ligatures that you'll see um, starting out will be on the bottom, just like that. Okay, so now we got the mouthpiece assembled. And we'll just put the cap on just like so to protect the mouthpiece. And we'll just put it aside for now. So now we can get to the saxophone. 
So in the case here, um, show you the proper way of taking it out of the case. And what to not to do is don't grab anything by the rods here to pull it out of the case. Go for anything that's solid. So I would say the bell here. So I'm going to reach in, pull the horn out just like so. This is the boat, so you can also support it this way. And then what you're going to see is that there is what's called an M plug. So I'm going to loosen the neck tensioning screw here, remove the M plug. Now this is important. Um, this helps secure the saxophone in the case so there's no damage while in transit. Um, so it goes in there, and when it's in the case, it helps stabilize it in the case. It also can protect this little lever right here, which is an octave mechanism lever. Okay, so this is important. Make sure you put that on the instrument when, you're, when we get to the point of putting it away. All right, so we loosen the neck tensioning screw. Now we just need the neck to go in here. So then we just simply put the neck in like so, and then we want to tighten the screw. Again, not too tight um, and not too loose. The whole purpose here is that it just holds the neck secure in your playing position that you choose that's most comfortable for you. All right, now let's finish the assembly here. We have the mouthpiece uh, that we would like to get put on to the neck cork here. Now I will say this, uh, especially uh, newer neck corks, they tend to be dry. So I will say that cork grease is your friend. Um, so please don't be shy here. So this helps get the mouthpiece onto that neck cork. Um, so simply what we do is just take it, apply on the neck cork. We want to work it in. So we'll just work it in like this. If you have a bunch of excess, then you can just simply wipe off the excess with a cloth. Okay, now I feel pretty good about that. Um, so now we're just gonna go ahead and put on the mouthpiece. A couple of uh, cautions here. Uh, being a repair tech, I see some common damages. So I just wanna save you money and time here. So when you're putting the mouthpiece on, don't grab by the neck because you have this key that can bend on you. And don't grab around here, which is your octave mechanism. So if you grab around here or here while trying to put the mouthpiece on, you can cause damage and your horn may not work after that. So what I'd like to do is, again, anything solid. So it's pretty solid here. We're putting the mouthpiece on. So I will put my hands, hold it here. Then I'll take the mouthpiece and I'll just twist it in rough in position here. So when not really easy, if it's hard to put on, put on cork grease, it is your friend. If you hear a squeaky door sound, definitely it needs cork grease. All right, so we have now successfully uh, assembled the instrument. Now we're gonna put it away. All right, so we're just simply gonna reverse the process. So again, we'll take the mouthpiece off, put it aside for a second, take the neck, we unscrew the uh, neck screw, loosen it, so now we can take it off. Let's go ahead and put that back in the case here. Now, we we'll grab our end plug. We simply just put that back in, grab it by the bell, and we go ahead and put that back in. And with the mouthpiece, we'll take the cap off, take the reed off. Uh, always take the reed off. I see oftentimes people leave the reed on, not good. Um, so always take your reed off, put it back in its case. You can also buy um, storage cases as well. Uh, put that in the case. And um, now we, uh, so that's how you successfully put it back in the case. I do want to talk about swabbing the instrument. Uh, so in all of our Boomer uh, rental, we supply a body swab. Uh, there's other swabs that I highly recommend you buying. Uh, which will uh, swab out the neck and also swab out the mouthpiece. Uh, one of our Boomer Music representatives can go over uh, all the different types that are out there and see what best fits your needs. Um, so what we do supply is one of these swabs here. It's a pull-through swab. And so we'll take that out of the case. We know how to take the instrument out. We'll notice that we have a weight on this side 
and we have the swab. Uh, this is going to be the absorbing uh, material, and then this helps fan it out when you're pulling it through the body. So simply, what we're going to want to do here is put the weight in first, and then we'll put the cloth in like so. Now, you'll notice that it has a curve in it, and there's a lot more solid piece of metal here. So my goal, if everything goes right, uh, that it will follow that contour. So let's give it a shot. Whew, we did it. All right, congratulations. Now we just need to pull it through. Um, and to caution with, this is, uh, in this section of the tube, it's called an uh, octave pip. You don't have to know that for your test, uh, but it kind of protr uh, protrudes into the body a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna try to not get caught on that when we pull it through. So the goal is, I want to pull it through while this is at the top and we'll just pull it through just like that. And now we have successfully swabbed out your body here. Um, so again, we'll just recap. We want to put the end plug back in, grab it by the bell and put it back in the case. Take your swab and uh, we'll put this into your case. We'll go ahead and shut it, latch it, make sure it's tight before you start picking up by the handle. And we're done with this segment. I'll see you on the next video. If you need help with instruments, repairs, sheet music, or anything band or orchestra, reach out to us at boomermusiccompany.com. And if you like what you hear, do me a favor and tell a friend. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our e-newsletter so you will never miss another video or podcast. This is Drew with Boomer Music Company. Thank you for listening.